By the end of this episode of the Fallible Man podcast with Dr. Dylan Peckis, you'll have learned what sleep apnea really is, the truth about what causes sleep apnea, because it's not what you think. You'll know how to improve your own breathing issues, and you'll have a natural solution to sleep apnea that helps most people without ever having to go farther than that. Check out this thought from Dr. Dylan. And let's get into it. Because with the breath work, like you, you kind of have the tools you already need to get started and, and start really like making improvements. So um, just focus on like carving out that time for yourself, whether it's doing it. Um, and like, like I always tell my patients, like don't get into the, the, the whirlwind of like looking for this machine or that surgery or this mouth guard. Or, like you, you, your body has the capacity to do things right. You just need to give it a little nudge. Here's the million dollar question. How do men like us reach our full potential, grow into the men we dream of being while taking care of our responsibilities, working, being good husbands, fathers, and still take care of ourselves? Well, that's the big question. In this podcast, we'll help you answer those questions and more. My name is Brent, and welcome to the Fallible Man Podcast. Welcome to the Fallible Man Podcast, your home for all things man, husband, and father. Big shout out to Fallible Nation and a warm welcome to our first time listeners. Hey, we know there's a lot competing for your attention, so it means a lot to us that you're checking us out. Thank you for that. Be sure and connect with us after the show at the Fallible Man on most social medias. Let me know what you thought of the show. I'd love to hear about your experience. And if you really enjoy it, be sure and leave us a uh, review on Apple Podcasts. We'll see if I don't totally freeze up. My name is Brent. Today, my special guest is Dr. Dylan Petkiss. Dr. Dylan, welcome to the Fallible Man Podcast. Hello. Thanks for having me. Now, we like to start things a little bit light. So how's your trivia? Uh, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Here is the question of the show. Live and Let Die was a theme for a James Bond film of the same name. But which British band recorded it? Is it A, The Clash, B, The Who, The Beatles, C, the Beatles or D, Wings? Oh, is it The Beatles or The Wings? It's it's The Beatles. The Beatles? Wait, wait, wait. Yes, final answer. Yes. Final answer. All right. Now, guys, you know the rules. Play along. Do not cheat. Do not fast forward. Don't look it up. And for God's sake, if you're driving, please don't write it down. Just remember it and come back to it. It's not that important. We'll get back to that later in the show. Now, <laughs> yeah, I know. I make you wait. Sorry. I'm going to change my answer to the wings. The wings. The wings. The wings. I'm <laughs> flipping back over. <laughs> At least you know the wings is a British band. And right. Guns N' Roses did a cover of it later. If I can <laughs> redemption points pad myself there. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Guns N' <laughs> Roses fan. You know. Now, Dr. Dylan, I don't do big introductions. So in your own words, today, who is Dr. Dylan? Dr. Dylan Peckis is someone who doesn't always like to say my name in third person. Uh, but... <laughs> More importantly, uh, someone who is out here helping people uh, with sleep apnea. Yes, we you know we help people with many other different issues, but one of the biggest ones uh, is, is sleep apnea because um, it it just kind of robs you of your your human dignity and humanity being able to like function on a day to day basis, and so uh, that's what I give a lot of my time, my effort. Uh, in my heart into because it's something I've gone through um, and doing that online. So there's a lot of fun online things, which are always <laughs> fun, as we all know. Um, so that's kind of the 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 professional side. Um, on another note, I'm in a, a log cabin. This is a real, real wood. I think it's actually cedar. I'm not sure. I don't think there's smell of vision, so you can't confirm that. Uh, and I live in the Tallahassee area, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so we had to, you know, call in the government for some internet for the show specifically. Um, actually, internet's actually kind of bad out here. So that's another story. Um, and I live out here with my wife, got two dogs, uh, three cats, and then there's like a bunch of uh, chickens and goats and 
I think lamb. I'm not sure. It's, it's our neighbors. We, we let them kind of hang out um, on our, well, I guess grays. They don't hang out and loiter <laughs> like a bunch of farm animals. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of it. Just kind of easy living out here, nice and quiet. Um, and that's, I guess, who I am there. <laughs> I'm not sure there's a wrong answer to who I am. So but hey, I, I enjoy the thought, right? So you say so you got the farmyard connected with the friends, right? Mm-hmm. That, that's all yeah. good. Chickens can be a little, we have chickens in, we're not technically supposed to have chickens in city limits, but we have a lot of people in our region who do. We have a lot of roosters who don't agree on what time morning is. It, it's a, it's a, it's a big disagreement. Some roosters are on daylight savings time. Some aren't. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, I'll be out walking in the early mornings with my daughter and I mean, it's 4 30 in the morning. It's pitch black outside. It's still kind of got that night lingering and there's the rooster randomly crowing. It's like, are you, are you confused? <laughs> the sun doesn't come up for like three more hours. What are you doing? So Tallahassee is a good spot. I, I keep meeting people. I'm just going to have to like make a, a round of all the people I've met in Florida. I have several podcaster friends in Florida and uh, I, just, I just didn't go back to visit Florida again. It's been a long time. Well, you're not there. missing much in Tallahassee. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to admit, I, I was a panhandle Florida. I, I was, I lived in Fort Walton beach. I loved it. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. White sand beaches, crystal blue waters. It's, it's hard not to like, right mm-hmm. yeah. now what house would the sorting pat hat put you in if you go to hogwarts uh, ravenclaw ravenclaw okay Just feeling ravenclaw i'm not quite gryffindor i'm definitely not hufflepuff definitely not slytherin so <laughs> therefore the things that divide and unite us, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny. My my wife's super into Harry Potter. Um, she she reads the books in Spanish, um, just because why not? Um, <laughs> and I've only, I think I've I've read the first three. I've only watched the first movie, but I know everything that happens in every single because I. You, you ever know anyone who actually looks up spoilers of things just so you don't have to go and spend the time knowing it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get the Cliff Notes version. That's what I do. I'm like, oh, I can, I can spend a week reading all these things, or I can go to Wikipedia. So, uh, yeah. So I, I know. Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone in five minutes or less. You know? Yeah, like you just want to skip out on the whole, you know, fantasy experience. Just like where, who put this stone here? That's what I need to know. I, I'm pretty sure there's like a whole YouTube channel that just does that. If not, there's someone's missing out. Well, that's my, that could be the second career. There you go. There you go. <laughs> now, now you have a mission. Orange juice, pulp, some pulp, no pulp. Um, I didn't know there was a third option for some pulp. Uh, the no pulp pulp's just gross. I mean, um, I remember the first time I think I was like, must've been six or eight somewhere in there. I think I had that on a family vacation with the pulp. That ruined my day. That's been a <laughs> that's been a formative childhood memory. Is pulp, orange juice. All so. right, that, I, I'm I'm sorry. It was traumatic. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, didn't expect yeah. it. It was just like, what? <laughs> Who put this in here? Well, thinking about it, right? I'm, I was like, you know, if you have never had pulp and orange juice, and you got a big mouthful, all of a sudden you would really be a little. I, I can see how that could be upsetting. Like, you're like, uh, uh, what? what <laughs> it's like, all in your teeth, and you're like, what, uh, what is this? And you're eating with a spoon, and then, <laughs> and like, no one else was reacting around me. I was like, did you all get the same thing? Am I just like, yeah? I remember that more vividly than I should. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, other than the pulp story, if I was to sit down with you guys at the dinner table, what is one story your family would try and tell to embarrass you? Oh, one story to embarrass me? That's a that's a pretty I mean, that's a hard one because of how many there would be. Um hmm. 
That'll be a Every good one. Every fun to go to, though. The I think a good one would be. Um, oh, so I um, when I was in grad school, um, I I think for the first three years I never I, I just didn't take a vacation. And then one time my advisor was like, "Hey, I was kind of looking over the staffing thing. Uh, you 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 haven't taken any time off in three years, so uh, you have a mandatory three weeks off starting today." I was like, "Oh, okay." Um, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And on the walk back from the office, I would uh, walk by this uh, store and it was, uh, oh, geez, what's the, like, what's the chain? It's like REI, something like that. Mm, yeah. It was, it was like that, but not that. I think it was like Appalachian Outdoor. So if anyone's, you know, Appalachian Outdoor State College, really great store, recommend. Um, use coupon code PECAS. No, there's no coupon code. But anyway, <laughs> um, the <laughs> uh, I walked by it. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should go camping. I have never gone camping before in my entire life, ever. And I'm like, mid-20s, I'm like, yeah, let's go camping. So I just walk in there. Um, I'm like, hey, I'm going camping. And I remember like the sales rep was like, and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything. <laughs> so like, I think I ended up buying like a tent and like a, like a little gas stove. And I'm like, all right, I'm good. Don't need, need nothing else. We're good to go. And I just uh, put that in the car. This is all like 10 a.m. still. Put that in the car. I just started driving out. Um, I think I brought like, I think I just took stuff out of the freezer, put it into a cooler. Really high level of thought put into this trip. Um, uh, didn't bring water, by the way. Uh, and just get in the car and I'm driving and I'm like, where am I going to go? I I don't know where I'm going to go. And I, I, uh, use my iPhone. I was like, I just type in state parks near me, and <laughs> I just go to this the first place <laughs> uh, that I that I just find. I I forget where it was in Pennsylvania, um, but I get there and I'm like, okay, this is cool. We're camping. Just pull my car in, and this is a series of like just like stupid decisions. I'm like, okay, it's like 4 p.m. I'm here, settled in. Or I think I settled in and I'm like, let me go on a hike. No map, no nothing. Uh, and the idea of setting up your campsite before a sunset, not, not, I mean, if you thought, <laughs> if you thought I would have thought of that before then you're deadly wrong. So like I'm out on this trail, it's getting dark and I'm like, I don't know where I am, this, that, and the other, um, uh, get back. Eventually it's like dark. Um, then at this point, I don't know why I just didn't sleep in my car. I was like, no, I got to have a full camping experience. So the first time ever I'm taking this tent out of the bag, um, do all that, get it together. Fast forward tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm like, okay, I think I got this camping thing. And then it dawns on me at, at, you know, you know, sunrise. I'm like, oh, wait, what am I going to eat? So <laughs> I just have frozen. No, this time it's thawed meat. Okay. And I just had this, like, I did bring a pan. Okay. I did bring a pan. Uh, and I just realized like, wait, I didn't bring any ice. There was like three pounds of like, I just, I think it was just ground beef or like chipped beef, something like that. Uh, so I cooked it all at the same time. So I thought that was a good idea. Um, and then that was the food for the next like five days. Okay. And this is the point where people are thinking any sort of health or medical knowledge from this guy, I should just stop. Not like this. This is the time to make that decision. Um, <laughs> and then uh, then the next three days were just eating. It was like hiking, eating beef that had a lot of salt on it. Because I figured I was like, I think they use salt to preserve meat back in the day. <laughs> um, and again, at this time, mind you, I have no water, none. Zero, and I'm just like walking through I'm like man like why do I feel so tired all the time I'm like oh wait I haven't like drank any water in like a day um and so when I end up going to a new campsite I was like I'm not sure how, like, how dehydrated you've ever been in your entire life but this was like I don't know like three hour sauna level of like <laughs> and then I eventually find this uh rest stop and I don't know if you've ever been on a vending machine like really, really thirsty. That thing cannot move fast enough. <laughs> and I think I got like four Aquafinas, like drank them immediately. Uh, and then 
that was, I mean, that I, I could just keep going on. There's like either uh, then, because well, there's only one thing that happens when you eat a bunch of salty beef for three days in a row. It's, it, it rhymes with my area um, in hiking. So it was just a, a great time. And then there's a, trying to make a campfire. Some guys like grandpa came over and like made it for me. I'm like mid twenties and <laughs> happened to have so much. So it was great. It was great. Um, and then I came back to humanity and they were like, how was your trip? And then they were like, <laughs> now, now this is why we don't let you out of the lab. We know it's not very safe for you. This is not. <laughs> well, we, I, I, I won't judge too hard in camping because it's not everybody's bag. I, uh, my brother-in-law, or sorry, my brother, we were on vacation and I had never taken my daughter's camping. And cause I'm just, I don't actually enjoy camping much. I know how to do it. I just don't want to, I, I want a hotel, you know, but, uh, not raccoons. <laughs> right. Exactly. So I was like, well, if I'm going to take a camping for the first time, my brother's a huge camper. Like, like he, he's that dude who like puts on a backpack and takes his two dogs and hikes into the mountains for five days and eventually comes back. It's like, did you take a tent now? I've got a tarp. It's over a string. Like he's like, he's hardcore. And so we took him camping and my daughters had a blast. And so I came back from camping and I had to buy like fishing gear and I hate fishing because my daughter fell in love with fishing and I had to buy camping gear because they fell in love with camping. It's like, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I can't fault the camping thing because if you don't know camping, like it's, there are much worse stories. I, I went to high school in Wyoming, dude. <laughs> we, we'd get people from outside the state come camp there in the, in the Rocky Mountains to have an experience and they'd leave in body bags. So oh, man. you survived. You did good. That's what I, that's what I said. They're like, you know, but apparently they have higher standards. standards. Right. It, it was a growing, it's a character building experience. It was, it was like, what's the dumbest series of decisions can I make? Like literally I, I booked the, cause you have to book a campsite. That's, that's what confused me. I was like, what is this? Like an outdoor hotel. Um, and I like, I booked it like an hour before showing up. <laughs> They're like, did you print out your ticket? I'm like, what do you think this is? <laughs> I, I did it on my phone while I was driving on the way here. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that part always, like, I, I had to get, like, a parks pass. Here in Washington, you have to have, like, a parks pass, or you have to pay extra fees, and there's, like, state parks have one pass, and the, mm. it's, it's like, do I have all the right bureaucratic paperwork to go camping? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, fair enough. So, if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? Uh, Any superpower? Um... I think the one that came to mind was, I guess, pausing and rewinding time. That would be, maybe I played too many video games growing up where you can just restart. Um, but that would be it. Just like, oh, that didn't go well. Boop. And then just kind of redo it. The, or do I want that or immortality? Is immortality a superhero power? Is that a thing? Just I don't know forever. if it's a superpower, but I mean, I think it could qualify. Right, we'll have to run it by the council. Um, would I want to redo time or live for? No, I feel living forever would eventually get really boring. So I'll go. I, I will double down on the pause rewind. Well, it definitely worked for Doctor Strange with the time stone thing, right? I mean, kind of saved his hide and the whole. Yeah. Universe, so, it, yeah. and it saved me more than once in the Prince of Persia video games growing up. <laughs> rewind it, yeah. Whoops, that didn't work. Bag it up. Bag it up. <laughs> <laughs> biggest pet peeve biggest pet peeve oh man biggest pet peeve um man i i like really don't see that many people because i live in the middle of nowhere so like i gotta remember what would be pet peeve of what's something that annoys me every single day I'm trying to think who i interact with people online pet peeve 
it can't just be people chewing with their mouth open because that's just like an easy one. <laughs> but I, I have a friend who can't eat if somebody's doing that at the table. Like she literally gets sick and just has to walk away. So it, it could be really <laughs> my biggest pet peeve. Do I do I spend too much time by myself to even remember what this is? Well, I mean, I guess online what would be a, a big pet peeve there. I think. Well, is it really my fault if that I get sucked into other people's opinions on social media? Maybe it is. But nonetheless, I think people leaving comments on social media acting as if like there is not another person who like posted that. <laughs> like like people saying things online that they would never say in real life. I think that's my biggest pet peeve. Like I'll post okay. something about like I don't know, sleep or whatever and someone's like Oh, you're like, you're like a huge, like bleep, bleep. Da, da, da. I'm like, you act like I just insulted like your grandmother. I just said something about like melatonin, chill out or like, uh, you know, like, or, or, oh, oh, actually this might be my biggest pet peeve. This might be my biggest pet peeve. People who are um, armchair academics. So what I mean by this <laughs> is like, uh, sometimes people like, I'll say like, oh yeah, like melatonin, you look at a meta-analysis and like, you know, it really doesn't show effectiveness past six months, da, 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 da. And they'll be like, well, like what's the validity of that research? And I was, and they're like, you might catch it sometimes on social media comments. My wife's pretty on it about me not being super snarky about research, but like, I still sometimes am. I'm like, oh yeah, what kind of criteria? Like, what's their like size effect or sort of like power, you know, analysis have you done or would you need to to know that? Oh, I was just, I was, just, I, I, I like, it, like the, the moment someone's like, uh, I think, I, I think it's from the movie Spider Man, actually. Like, you know, the who was the original Green Goblin? You know who I'm talking about? The uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, there's that there's a meme where he's like, I'm something of a scientist myself. That if, if anyone knows what I'm talking about, like that's how people come across. You're like. Do you have any uh, double blind placebo studies on this? <laughs> and I'm like, you do realize what that means, right? Like, say, if we're talking about like breath work or something like this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you double blind the study? Can you can you please tell me? How would someone not know what breathing exercise they're? Could you could you inform me of of this? That would that would be great. <laughs> and then. That's usually when the comment they, they don't comment back after that. So that 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 is it. Arm, armchair academics who I get wanting to, you know, see verified, validated stuff, but it's like also uh don't ask questions you don't know what to do with the answers of. Because if I mean, maybe I'm a little bit of a research snob. I'm a bit of a research snob myself, uh, <laughs> from <laughs> just being an academia. Uh, you know, because you know, I, I have my master's, but originally I was going to get my PhD, but then decided like, okay, medical school would be better. Um, and even, even doctors, um, in terms of interpreting research, I'm not even going to say not bad. They're, they're, they're bad. Like it's, it's just, ugh. <laughs> it's like, did you, did you look at how this was done? <laughs> uh, so that's my biggest pet peeve. I, I appreciate that. You know, I, I, so my daughters are nine and 12, right? And as, as a dad, I'm trying to teach them things as, as they're growing up. And just last night we were watching something and my daughter made a statement. I don't even, I don't remember what it was. I was like, you know, that doesn't fit, right? Like the, the word, do you even know what that term means? She's like, I'm 12. I said, then why did you use it? If, if you don't know what it means, don't use it. Right, everybody's heard a double blind study. Most people have no idea what it means, but but we've heard the term. Oh, All of us who wow. used to think that the lack of available information in the world when I was younger was the reason people were stupid. We've been proved wrong by the internet. We yeah, we've <laughs> that's why we're building on artificial intelligence as a hope, because I, I think it can beat out, you know, biologic stupidity. But yeah, like, uh, oh, like I, I think the number one one that always gets me is like, what was it? What, oh, it was too small a sample size, which is like literally like eighth grade analysis of like why a study had a shortcoming. 
but like <laughs> the like sorry i think i've just taken too many stack classes to even like because <laughs> because the really brutal the, the really brutal analogy i always make like well like if you ran a, a a you know clinical trial of like does it hurt to get shot by a gun like what does the sample size need to be for that like as like a as an analogy of power analysis because people always be like well there wasn't enough like everyone says about every single study ever there's like you can't have eight billion people in a study <laughs> Sure you can't. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna close <laughs> my mouth right there. Get the show. I'll, I'll get the show taken off before it ever airs. If I keep going. I, I think the last several years, have, you know what? I, I will say the last several years have made us more skeptical about accepting certain things. So it's good that we're starting to ask questions, but we need to be asking more the questions right that we understand mm -hmm. so we can get something out of the answers as opposed to trying to sound clever when we do it yeah the uh yeah because the uh what's the one magazine is it buzzfeed like I, i'm not sure if it is buzzfeed but it's always that sort of structured headline where it's like uh ping pong balls are good for you know testosterone experts say like you know what like that headline where it's just like so oh, yeah. we just randomly put in experts say or research shows. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> and it's like, wait, what? Um, and, and then like just the yes, because like I mean, especially with how like I think probably right now, um, this is conjecture. I'm not sure if they would actually uh, if there is any surveys to substantiate this, but probably right now in the in the sort of the aftermath of COVID and all of that, uh, I would say probably public distrust in like presented information is at an all-time low wait 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 public trust time low public distrust would be an all-time high i think um yeah. and yeah people do need to be able to ask questions but people don't know what what questions to ask like i like i've taken so my, my advisor in grad school like she made me take a statistics a statistics course every single semester in grad school so by my third year i was in my sixth one and it's me and like in like you know biology physiology world by myself and everyone else is either a statistics phd or in like some weird engineering field and we're looking at these like 3d plots and i'm just sitting there i'm like how did i get here but nonetheless <laughs> uh People, in terms of like interpreting research, um, I mean, one, people don't really have access to to the articles and reading an abstract is never really enough. Uh, but two, like uh, having gone to a lot of research expositions where people are like, I don't know, they gather in a conference room and they're like, here's my research, here we go. Uh, it's kind of scary because like you will find independent research groups and like they'll have banners that say like, we'll get the results you need. I'm like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> What y'all mean by that? Right. Because <laughs> uh, uh, there's Lots an interesting results. Yeah, there's there's an interesting article uh, by this guy. I think his last name is like Ionis, something like that. Not the guy from the Milwaukee Bucks that plays basketball, but another. He, the, he, this guy is Greek, um, but it's called like I think it's called like statistics. I think it's called like statistics and damn lies, something like that. And it kind of breaks down in terms of just like how faulty a lot of the research methodology is. So it does really leave uh, somebody needs to have a very discerning eye of like, okay, what does this mean? Be able to triangulate it all. Cause like just basing everything on like one sort of study, um, you know, it's going to have its own risk. So being able to have it all together and then apply it and see it for yourself. Cause your N equals one is always going to be the most important. Not like what happened to these 10,000 people in, the Dominican Republic, uh, but really for yourself there. But I guess that is my pet peeve if I'm able to talk about it this much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I I feel the same way about polls. I statistics always fall, I I love stats, but at the same time, right in any field, I'm always a skeptic just because it's like 
uh, I know how you can skew things with like polls and, and research if you want to, if you're unethical about it, right? Uh, I know exactly how they get some of the polls they get and publish as far as like public opinion. It's, it's really not hard to stack those, mm -hmm. right? You, you can go to one region of the country, one particular area and ask a sampling from one re specific like state or city and know pretty much how the answer is going to go depending on what you're polling. So it's uh yeah it, it's the last couple of years definitely made us all a little more skeptical of information i think we're in a stage where we're now really distrustful and skeptical but we don't really have the education or the facts to process it and know what to do with that distrust mm -hmm. right I, 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 that's that's got to be where some of those <laughs> double blind so yeah double blind okay Right, because I have an idea of what all that means, but I also know that that couldn't possibly work in every contextual study you do. Right, the breath work example is great on that because, like, uh, yeah, I'm not sure that's working. So, yeah, no, I, I, I get it, guys. We've been getting to know Dr. Dylan just a little bit, who he is, what he's about, what he's like. And uh, don't take the camping trip as his medical basis. He did survive college after that and go on to get his medical degree. <laughs> <laughs> we all lived through those young years. In the next part of the show, we're going to dive into understanding sleep apnea. This is something that is prevalent uh, in the United States and all over the world. It affects men. It affects women. It affects people you think are healthy. So we're going to roll our sponsor and we'll be right back with more from Dr. Dylan Pekus. Are you tired of tossing and turning at night, searching for that elusive perfect pillow or just better bedding in general? Well, look no further. Our podcast is proudly sponsored by MyPillow, the renowned American pillow manufacturer. With over 50 million pillows, pillows sold and a legacy of quality, MyPillow knows that you work hard for your money and want quality products at an affordable price. That's why they're offering all TFM listeners and friends the special promo code for massive savings year round. Enjoy some of the finest sheets, pillows, slippers, mattress toppers, bath towels, and comforters on the market today. Save big when you order with free promo code TFM. That's TFM, the Valuable Man Podcast, obviously, on all 250 quality American products at MyPillow. MyPillow is here to transform your sleep experience. And as a special treat for our listeners, you can enjoy up to 80% off your order with the code TFM. Yes, you heard that right. 80 up to 80 percent off you'll not only enjoy some of the most comfortable and cozy products you've ever bought but also support a great american company the fallible man podcast and save a ton of money doing it it's really a triple win so why wait head over to mypillow.com slash tfm or call 800-796-9775 that's 800-796-9775 to order now you can't be your best without a good night's sleep and my pillow delivers Guys, welcome back. In the first part of the show, we're getting to know Dr. Dylan a little bit, just who he is, what he's about, getting a feel for him. In this part of the show, we're going to dive into understanding sleep apnea because this is something that impacts a lot of people. Chances are, even if this doesn't impact you personally, you probably have people in your circle that are affected and impacted by sleep apnea. Uh, I've actually been really looking forward to this conversation because I'm pretty sure I have sleep apnea. and positive my wife does but this is something that impacted me because my dad has sleep apnea really really bad and he kept fighting us on it and pretending that it wasn't a real issue for him up until he was so sleepy and not with it so foggy that he turned onto an off ramp to get on the highway with my mom in the car no one got hurt but it was enough to scare him that he pulled over to the side of the road and just let her drive and made a doctor's appointment and finally went to, at, th at this point, he was falling asleep. Like he would fall asleep talking and, and wake up 10 minutes later and pick back up where he was and all the rest of us would just laugh because we're just, the conversation is going on. This happened all the time. But he was like, no, there's nothing wrong with me. I don't have any problems. 
So this is a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I think this impacts a lot of men and it doesn't always show up in the form. You know, I know a lot of bodybuilders and strong men have CPAPs because they have sleep apnea because of the size of their neck. So there, there are a lot of things that a lot of us don't understand about it. And Dr. Dylan's going to clear some of this up for us today and help us get a handle on this thing that can really hurt you in the background without you even realizing is going on. So Dr. Dylan, let's, let's just make this really clear right off the bat. What is sleep apnea clinically? So sleep apnea is when you stop breathing more than five times per hour while sleeping at night. Okay. So that's obviously bad because if you just stop, like if you just stop breathing in the middle of the day, you would think that was kind of weird, right? <laughs> if you did that 10 times per hour, okay. Did that 20 times per hour, okay. But like some men, well, I mean, really anyone, men or women, uh, but it affects 70%. Like of 100 people who have sleep apnea, 70 are men, 30 are women. Um, but when you start to do that, like 30, 40, 50 times a night, you know, imagine if someone came into your bedroom and woke you up like every other minute, you know, it's like essentially like having a puppy or a newborn baby <laughs> uh, in, in terms of just like the sleep deprivation. The thing is, it doesn't always uh, wake you up consciously, right? It could take you to like, you know, you can still be like unconscious, but like not in a deep restful state. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then your sleep quality just completely falls apart and then you're you know doing things like that where like a lot of times when i'm talking with people i'm like hey how's driving how are those zoom meetings okay <laughs> people are just like how do you know i'm nodding off during that or uh dinner they're, they're falling asleep uh because they're just just not sleeping at night whatsoever they're kind of knocked out but you know if you're waking up you know let's say you're down for eight hours wake up 30 times every hour, 240 times a night. You know, I think we can all recognize when you wake up like maybe five times a night, how bad a night <laughs> that's going to be. But then like make that 240. That's just beyond off there. Ew. So, Okay. So that's, that's the clinical definition of it. And so a lot of us just are thinking, okay, right, right. And we associate it with snoring. Is it always about snoring or? It, if we were to make a Venn diagram, because we love drawing circles, uh, there would be a lot of overlap uh, between the two because um, sleep apnea, one of the, I don't know, it's a necessary but not sufficient part of sleep apnea. Okay, let me kind of break this down. We talked about camping earlier. I've learned a lot since then. So like to have a campfire, you need wood right but is wood sufficient to have a campfire no you need like oxygen you need a fuel source right uh like i don't know whatever you spray on it okay i haven't learned that much about making a campfire but uh with sleep apnea yes a anatomical narrowing of your airways is a necessary part of the development of this disease but you need one other factor to then make that a problem Okay. And that other factor is a faulty breathing pattern where you're over breathing. Okay. So when you combine these two together, over breathing plus a narrow airway, your airway gets more and more narrow. Okay. And snoring is essentially like a whistle. Okay. So like you try to whistle with like pursed lips something like that. Obviously, if you just like keep your mouth open, just like blow air, like you're not going to really make any sound. But if you were to purse your lips together and then blow, then you would make a sound because the opening is a lot uh, smaller and that's going to cause like this turbulence of air, which is sound essentially. So that's why snoring and sleep apnea are, are very close together uh, there. So if, if you have, if you have snoring and you're tired, it's very likely you have sleep apnea. Okay. Fair enough. I just, I, right. Most of us are referencing things we know, like television and movies. Unfortunately, that's the point of reference for a lot of these things that Excellent. We, we were talking about off camera. Uh, 
and and some on with your pet peeve, right? That's for a lot of us, that's our reference point, right? We're not medical professionals. And so we know what we see on YouTube or on television. And guys, let's be honest, most of that is a bunch of trash and isn't anywhere near accurate. So what is, you said is, is a breathing pattern issue? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you uh, look at the research, my favorite thing, right? We talked about my pet peeve. Uh, <laughs> you will see that, well, actually, let's kind of anchor this on what people kind of notice. Uh, so if you're like sleeping with your partner, right? Or if like, I mean, even with like your pet, you'll notice this. As mammals, kind of group them all together, uh, fall asleep, you'll start to hear their breathing a little bit more in that initial period, right? And then it'll kind of trail out. So there's this little transition in like tidal volume, which is how much air you breathe in and out, okay? So when you breathe at night, like normal healthy breathing would actually be less breathing, okay? The reason why that is, is because your body's metabolism should match breathing, okay? They should match together, all right? So you already know this with your car, right? If you put the your foot on the gas pedal, you're going to have more air coming in and out of the engine. Or if you go sprint really, really fast, what do you do after you sprint? You Dive. breathe. <laughs> well, yeah, you could die. That, that's also a possibility. You know, there, there's not a chance of zero. But, um, you know, you're going to breathe more because your metabolism just rev, revved up. Okay. So when you sleep, your metabolism compared to daytime does go down, obviously. Mm -hmm. doesn't go to zero. But, like, breathing should go down along with it. But when there is sleep apnea, then... Breathing remains elevated or even goes higher, okay? So a, a normal, healthy person will have a tidal volume, right? The amount of air they breathe in and out, about like 500 milliliters, which is, well, I, I didn't bring my, my props today, but let's just say it's like this much, uh, you know, half a liter Coke bottle. Uh, but in sleep apnea, it can be 1,500 milliliters, so three times as much, okay? So when you have more air, going in and out, then that'll cause a lot of problems, okay? One, that's going to cause more inflammation with your airways. So it's going to bring them closer together and closer together and you get snoring or they just snap shut, okay? Uh, and that's kind of the second thing. So the first big problem, inflammation just from too much air going through. If, if you're someone who uses a CPAP, you already know how much <laughs> constant air can really irritate your airways. Uh, thing number two that happens is this will then cause your airways to snap shut, okay? Because I know, like, I just told everyone, like, five minutes ago, sleep apnea is when you stop breathing, and now I'm telling you the problems you overbreathe. So if you've, if you've like, noticed this inconsistency in, in, you know, what we've been talking about, five points to you. But it how it goes is the breathing pattern goes up and up and up, and then airways will snap shut. And then it'll pretty much go in this pattern, kind of, like, up and down throughout the night. Okay, it's like a compensation pattern. Oh, we overcompensated, etc. And the reason this happens is because when you have a lot of air movement happening, all right. Um, well, let's go with like the simplest way to explain this. You know, like a like a like a bobo tea straw, like one of those big ones. You know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. No. Uh, the well, we'll do bobo tea, then we'll talk about showers, then we'll talk about window curtains. So the, I've come ready with my analogies. So essentially, if you have like a, like a okay, wait, no, this is a better one. Uh, using a paper straw to, to drink a milkshake always goes horribly wrong, okay? Because there's too much pressure, and then this causes the straw to collapse, okay? That's what happens in your airways when you overbreathe. That big gust of air causes a lot of pressure, causes the, the straw, which is your, your throat, your airway, to collapse at a certain point, you can't breathe, okay? That's fundamentally the mechanism by which your airway snaps shut. And this is why, like a CPAP, right? It uses brute force just to keep that airway open, okay? So that's one way to solve the problem, just you know, like brute force put air through there. But then the other thing is to go from over-breathing back into a normal, natural breathing pattern, because then, you don't have as much air 
as much pressure and that prevents the airways from collapsing in on each other. Okay. Um, we can skip the shower analogy and Bernoulli's equation and all that, but, uh, that's the, the basic mechanism is that you have too much pressure from too much, uh, breathing drive. And then that will bring an airway that has some sort of narrowing in it. Okay. And it'll just bring it closer together. And then it'll just go through that pattern throughout the night. So that's why, whether it's, uh, again, like having uh, some sort of narrowing, and this could range from a lot. It could be your adenoids. It could be uh, nasal turbinates. It could be, you know, yes, if you do have a little bit more uh, neck mass, that will set things up to be, you know, there's a necessary ingredient, but then you need to have this overbreathing component as well. Because when you, when you look at, uh, like there's been studies done, uh, like dentists, ENTs, where they're just like looking in people's airways, uh, the general population has like 60 to 80% of people have some narrowing of their airway. Okay. Which is a lot, right? Yeah. But, but only 10% are confirmed with sleep apnea. Yes. We could say there's an estimated 30%. I'm never sure where these estimates come from. They just say, well, we think it's three times this. Okay. Maybe I, it could be, I don't know, but only because there are a lot of people who are like, you know, denial over it. Um, uh, I mean, I was too, uh, but 10% over here with sleep apnea. So like, I don't have a degree in mathematics, but what I can tell you is that 10% and 60 to 80% are very different <laughs> in terms of, you know, cause if, if, if it was just airway narrowing, just, you know, one-to-one, -one, like this should be way higher, but it's not because the airway narrowing is necessary, but then the overbreathing needs to happen on top of it as well. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm processing as you're going, because I I was just always told it was a you know, basically a thickness thing, right? A, a, a density of your neck, whether that was like unhealthy weight or whether that was like you know you have a football, like a, a lineman grade football neck, you know, uh -huh. uh, just too much size, too much weight on that area collapsing your airway. This is what I was always told. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's why I, I, I bored you with a lot of statistics about how surgery is like not like this like instant cure-all to this, right? Because mm -hmm. if you're like removing, like like if you're doing the nasal turbinate reduction, which is again like five to 10, like zero to 10% improvement in symptoms, uh, or, you know, you're kind of clearing out the uvula and adenoids and all that, maybe like 40% improvement. Well, 40% of people have a 50% or less improvement. And then like actually advancing the jaw as well, having like a around 20% improvement. If it was anatomy, if it was only anatomy, okay, I don't, I don't want to like say anatomy is not important, but if it was the only factor, then those should be way more effective. And it's not because surgeons are like, oh, I cut out the wrong part. Like, no, they're very smart people knowing what they're doing. <laughs> oh, I took off your ear. I thought you said ear. Oh, it's nose. I'm um, okay. Uh, because obviously an ENT, they just go into the OR like, am I doing the ear, nose, or throat today? I don't, and sometimes they mess it up, but no, I'm joking. But uh, if it was anatomy, just like strictly, if it was strictly anatomy, um, then those things would be a lot more effective. But there's a lot of people who don't have the benefit from that because you can clear out the anatomy, mm -hmm. but if you're still over breathing at night, this thing's still going to happen here. And I, I, feel, I kind of look silly just like clapping here by myself, but the <laughs> clap along with me, but like, that's still going to happen. It's just going to be, it might be slightly less likely, but the thing is like, by the time, by the time someone even has surgery, because mm -hmm. like, you know, it, it is really used as a last resort, uh, which, which I think is, is an appropriate uh, practice measure. But by the time someone's there, like metabolically breathing wise, it, that's so bad that like, yes, you can correct anatomy. But then the bigger problem is still left with the breathing there. And in, in our pre-show conversations, you said that there's something going on at an even deeper level. You talked about cellular level. And like I I'm totally lost because I can't wait. This is down that low. This is Yeah. So let's go on the magic school bus here. So 
Do people even know what that is anymore? I, you know what, my kids are Magic School Bus fans. I like to watch it with them actually. So. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so, uh, at the end of the day, our body, like one of the body's like main job is to bring in the necessary substrates into our cells to produce cellular energy, so all the functions can happen. Okay, so as part of that, just like any good old campfire, which is now the, the running analogy, <laughs> one of the things you need, actually, this, this somehow worked all together. Um, you can have, again, fire, right? But you can also have something to help like burn it, right? But then one of the most important ingredients is oxygen, right? And when you get a fire going, what then comes out of it? Okay, there is a flame, there might be marshmallows, who knows? But the thing that comes out is carbon dioxide. Okay, yes, many other things, you know, carbon monoxide, blah, 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 but carbon dioxide, for the sake of this argument, we're gonna focus on that, okay? So essentially, our bodies are this big combustion engine, okay? Oxygen and food comes in, and then we get energy and carbon dioxide, okay? Cellular respiration, okay? So if we get on our magic school bus and go all the way down, to where this happens, it's inside your mitochondria. This is like the powerhouse of the cell. Yes, you know, great memories yeah. being formed around that. Uh, but essentially, it's just oxygen, glucose go in, right? Or oxygen and fatty acid. And then on the other side of this, you're going to get ATP, cellular energy, great stuff. And then also carbon dioxide. Okay. Well, the reason this connects with breathing, the primary driver of breathing is carbon dioxide which comes from your metabolic fire, okay? So if you start to have deficits in your mitochondria over here, then you're gonna produce carbon, like you're not gonna produce, well, sometimes it'll be too much, not enough. There'll be issues with carbon dioxide. And then you've now thrown off your body's signal to breathe properly. And then you will overbreathe. And then when you overbreathe, and you have this anatomy issue, okay? Or some people don't even have an anatomy issue and they still have sleep apnea. Then we're, we're back to where we were, but it, it is, it's from this misproduction, if you will, of CO2, carbon dioxide at a cellular level. That's the, the crux of it. I love this explanation, by the way. Like I, I, I could see it in my head. I, I really do. I watched the magic school bus with my kids. <laughs> so I'm watching Miss Frizzle walk me through this uh, on the school bus. Like my brain is, I'm a big kid. I, I, my, my daughter's <laughs> in my life. I, I absolutely love that. They love shows where they've learned things. I wish they still there. There's a second generation of magic school bus. Did you know that? No, I, yeah, there is Miss Frizzle's sister comes to teach because miss frizzle is working on her phd uh <laughs> dr frizzle oh, yeah so so her uh her sister comes to take over for the new generation of kids um but yeah no i i love i love that explanation because like i can actually put that together and i'm a little thick so that means my audience who's generally much smarter than me is, can can follow this conversation okay i i always appreciate when an academic can bring it down to something that most of us can understand. Uh, I, I think that's a gift that not all doctors and academics have. They need to watch more magic school bus. That's, that's pretty much it. That's basically the, the memo should be required. Well, that's, <laughs> that's the thumbnail for the episode for the YouTube version. People just don't know it yet. Sponsored um, by Frizzle <laughs> PhD. Who is affected by sleep apnea? You you said that they say ten percent, but allude to a lot more than that. Yeah, but who's really impacted by this? Because you said it's, it's making us tired, it's bringing us down, it's interrupting our function. So the the biggest demographic is men over forty five, mm -hmm. by by near and far, um, and that's I mean that I mean. Uh, that's probably about 60 to 70% of the, 
of the entire demographic of, of everyone. So like there's a few men who have sleep apnea, like less than 45. It's not as much, um, you know, you and maybe, well, and then I, I mean, I got the diagnosis when I was in my mid twenties. So I was like, what the, f- <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is this about? I'm going to go camping. Screw this. Uh, but it, it's really, you know, men, late forties, fifties, uh, like honestly men over 65, I mean, like, you could have a dinner party with men who are over 65, bring in 10 of them. And uh, you could probably close your eyes and point to four of them, blindfold it, and you'd probably be correct that they all have sleep apnea. You know, uh, it's just that like massively prevalent. Because um, a lot of it becomes like, I don't know who tells people who are 65 plus this, but like it's not normal to just like take naps all day. <laughs> like, and they're like, well, you know, I just figured this was getting old. I'm like, this is, if you say so. Um, but they're they're really rapidly affected um, by that. Um, that would be the main population of people affected. No, I, I asked the question because I, I shared earlier, you know, my dad turned down an off-ramp thinking it was the on-ramp because he wasn't clear. And so, guys, whether you have it or think you're starting to struggle with this, because obviously, right, uh, Dr. Dylan, you got hit 20 something. Yes. Yeah. How many people are affected? Well, your, your family is affected. Your, your friends are affected. You're, you're not showing up your best. Mm-hmm. Right. That's one of our big things here on the show is we're focused on showing up our best. You you can't do that when you're not sleeping, guys. Uh, we've talked about sleep here on the show. Ghostbed is one of our sponsors because I believe that sleep is just that important. Uh, as a personal trainer, I know how it impacts recovery and general health anyways. This is important stuff. Now we've been trying to understand a little bit about it because most of us, like I said, we have this bad idea of it based on television and movies and crap like that. So Dr. Dylan's been clearing this up for us in the next part of the show. We're going to dive into a natural solution. Dr. Dylan has developed a six step program solution that helps take care of this without the rotor rooter stuff. You guys, I, I didn't <laughs> have a conversation on air. I probably should have, uh, Without all that, without all the invasive, without the CPAPs, he's come up with a different solution that's helped him and is helping his clients. And we're going to get into that right after we take in this role from our sponsor. We'll be right back with more from Dr. Dylan Peckus. Struggling to catch quality Z's at night? It's time to change that narrative. Sleep isn't just a luxury. It's the crucial component for your overall well-being. From managing your weight to boosting muscle growth, reducing stress, and even enhancing your daily performance, sleep plays a vital role. Are you ready to level up your sleep game, get a better night's sleep overall? Then look no further than GhostBed.com. Join me in experiencing the difference with GhostBed. It's been a game changer for my sleep routine over the years. That's why here at the Fallible Man Podcast, we're honored to partner with our sponsor, GhostBed.com, to bring you this discount. So head to ghostbed.com, unlock a sweet 30% discount on your order using the code FALLIBLE. Don't wait any longer to upgrade your sleep quality. Let's make tonight the start of a better sleep and a better day is ahead. Now, let's dive back into the show. Guys, welcome back. In the last part of the show, we were just trying to understand what sleep apnea is, not the myth, not the TV crap, but what it actually is and how it affects us with Dr. Dylan. In this part of the show, we're going to get into Dr. Dylan's six-step system, but we're going to start off with qualifying us for this, right? Because I, I know this is, I, I have my insurance fight me on this. I went to do a, I was, I was actually asked to do a sleep study and we did an at-home sleep study and the doctor said, well, we actually need to do a real one. Uh, I want you to come in. And insurance was like, 
we already paid for one, so we'll we'll cover the CPAP if you are an APAP. So we'll we'll cover you in an APAP if you pay this your down your whatever that you got to pay with insurance companies. And so essentially, they're like, "Yeah, we'll we'll pay for it as long as you fulfill your deductible on everything." So I was going to have to like shell out five thousand dollars to uh. get started, and then they take care of follow up crap for the APAP and. Uh, it, they were just trying to get out of pain another thing. So I, I need to know, I think I struggle with sleep apnea. So doc, tell us what's going on. Yeah. So we're going to do a little, uh, assessment here and no ways this medical advice. This is all available. If you want to do it for yourself, it's called the stop bang questionnaire. Uh, and it's just an acronym. Okay. So stop thinking otherwise. Um, so going to go real quick. Yes. No questions here. So like if you, you can, I mean, well, obviously if you're driving, don't hold your fingers up and count, but <laughs> if your hands are free and you're stationary uh, and not behind two tons of steel, then this would be good to kind of go through here. So uh, question number one, do you snore loudly? Yes or no? Okay. And it can count if someone says you snore loudly. Okay. Uh, number two, do you often feel tired during the daytime? Yes or no? All right. Number three, has anyone anyone observed you stop breathing during sleep okay number four do you have high blood pressure okay in case you're wondering what that may mean i would say yes you do if you're to stop if the top number is uh more than 130 consistently all right um bmi is your body mass index greater than 35 okay uh the quickest way if you don't know metric is do you feel you're uh, more than 20 pounds overweight? Uh, are you more than 50 years old? All right. Is your neck circumference greater than 40 centimeters? And again, if you don't walk around with a measuring tape all day, uh, a good way to test that is can you get your hands all the way around your neck? Yes, it's a very crude measurement. I understand people will have different hands. Uh, but generally, if you can't get your hands around your neck, uh, that means your neck is pretty big. Uh, and the last one, are you uh, male? Okay. So if you got more than two, then you're at higher risk of sleep apnea. Okay. So you can keep your score for yourself. Um. <laughs> We're, I'm a pretty honest part, part in this show. So I'm going to say, right, I get six of those at least. I think maybe five. So it's very, then it's uh, very likely <laughs> would have sleep apnea. Because because from here, uh, what would, like, I mean, literally, if anyone ever wants to, like, just play a doctor by themselves, uh, theoretically, of course, but just mentally and, and, and not yeah. practically, uh, really had to backstep my way out of that one. But uh, you can look at, like, treatment algorithm for blank. Uh, so treatment algorithm for sleep apnea, this would be like one of the first things, okay, or, you know, a clinical assessment. Uh, and then from there, it's basically like PAP, it, the, the boxes will say PAP therapy, which will be CPAP, BiPAP, APAP, etc. Um, that's always the first thing, pretty much. Okay, well, okay, there is a little box like you ask, ask the patient, do you want to do this? Okay. Uh, and then if no, then okay, cool. Uh, well, it's not cool because then you're just going to, you know, suffer with this. Uh, but then if yes, it's always off to some PAP therapy. Well, sorry, before the PAP therapy will be a sleep study. Okay. You can go off to a lab. You can get something done at home, which is becoming more and more prevalent, which which I in, uh, I like the availability of that. Uh, and then based off that, it would be some sort of PAP therapy. Okay. Now, here's the fun thing. Uh if you are three or more on this, there is a 80% chance your sleep study is going to indicate sleep apnea and then go to PAP therapy, okay? And in the 20% of time your sleep study is negative, guess what the next step is to do? Repeat sleep study. <laughs> and, then, and then from there, 50% of people now fall back in to PAP therapy. So essentially, 90% of people who are three or more will end up on a CPAP based on this thing. Now, obviously, I'm not saying, you know, skip steps in the process, but I'm just giving you some probabilities and, and stuff here. Um, so yeah, so based on that, 
is a pretty good uh, way to start there. Um, so we should talk about some good first steps to fix it, I think would be appropriate. We should. But, yeah. Real quick for all of you who are, are not medical based, 40 centimeters if it is 15 inches. Give or give or take a quarter inch, just 40 centimeters, 15 inches. Yeah. So a... not not all guys think about sticking their hands around their neck, but most of us have had to get fitted for a collared shirt at some point. Yeah. So so the um yeah, so if that's the case, then uh let's talk about the yeah, there, there's six factors. I've been able to kind of tuck it into two factors because then it seems a lot less complicated. So it's six factors. It's, it, you know, it's kind of like a, a Buddhist thing. There's two things, but in one of those things, there's four other things. And then within, like, <laughs> it just kind of goes on and on. But uh, so the, the two big things are going to be, because this all falls under the umbrella of restore your natural breathing. Okay, like that's kind of like bottom line how we want to do this. There's going to be two big factors for that. Number one, is going to be resetting your breathing okay like the actual like retraining your body because after a certain point okay well i mean like really with anything like because if you're you know doing personal training like if someone has like some muscular imbalance etc they're going to create this pattern that they get stuck in for a long time right mm -hmm. same thing with breathing you need to like consciously retrain your breathing pattern okay because the breathing pattern you have during the day is the breathing pattern you have during the night okay so then the second big thing is to reduce inflammation, okay? Because if you ever had the cold, the flu, any sort of upper respiratory issue, it's hard to breathe <laughs> during that, okay? Uh, and a big part of that is from the inflammation that one is gonna make those airways more narrow, okay? But also metabolically, okay? Because if you've ever, um, you know, been sick enough that you go to the hospital, one of the things they do is like, what's your respiratory rate, right? They, they sit, watch you breathe, figure out how many times per minute you breathe. When that's higher, that's telling us, okay, that, oh, this person is having, you know, well, we could put them in criteria for sepsis, right? Uh, but like, there's some level of inflammation here to keep it super simple, level of inflammation that's driving higher breathing over breathing here we, here we go again right because those metabolic engines they're spewing out more co2 and that's that's driving breathing at a metabolic level so it's these two uh pieces here but again just like a lotus when you open it up now inside this one thing there's gonna be more things <laughs> so but the easiest one let's start with the reset breathing here so with resetting breathing pretty simple we go from over breathing because that's kind of like where most people will be and you want to have periods of time in which you're under breathing. Okay, now I feel like I'm like a reading rainbow person, under breathing. <laughs> and then your body will start to recreate in the middle. Okay, that's kind of the basic gist of it. So how do you do that? So uh, one of the best ways is called rectangle breathing to help slow down your breathing so you can kind of uh, find yourself in the middle ground. Okay, and all this is, and I'll, I'll go through it. So it's inhale for a five count, okay? So well, I'll just explain it because it's nothing's harder than trying to explain breathing exercises while talking. So inhale for a five count, then you pause for a 10 count, okay? And then you exhale for a five count, pause for a 10 count, then inhale for a 10 count, pause, sorry, inhale for a five count, pause for 10, exhale five, pause for 10, inhale five. Okay. So another way to think about it, the inhales and the exhales are always a five count. In between you pause for a 10 count. Okay. So I guess let's, let's do one round together. So inhale one, two, three, four, five, pause one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Exhale for five. One, two, three, four, five. Pause for ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nueve Diaz. All right. 
Um, so that's one cycle there. Now, uh, some people may find that difficult, okay? <laughs> if that's you, then just reduce the pause time down to a level that feels mildly comfortable. Okay, not easy, but mildly comfortable. So maybe to eight, maybe to five, something like that. And essentially, the best way you want to do this when starting out, because it's always good to do something and gain momentum with it and see results and continue from there. Uh, do that right before you go to bed, like as, like literally as you're laying there, because you're going to lay there anyway, okay? And then just do this breathing pattern, either for, you can do it for five or 10 minutes, or like literally, because it's very relaxing, it will help you drift off to sleep. And then that really helps set your breathing pattern for for the night. Okay, it won't, it won't go the whole night the first time, but like think of it like maybe it'll permeate into the first two hours and then three hours and it'll, it'll keep kind of going through like that. So that's one of the most important things that I'm always like, you know, kind of a, as a first step there, okay? Because as you go through that, many times, I mean, I hate to like be like, everyone's going to feel better with that tonight, uh, but a lot of people do. They're like, oh, wow, this like actually worked, okay, all right. Uh, as in like, whether you're waking up fewer times, uh, falling asleep faster, waking up feeling more refreshed, uh, that's where that goes, okay? Now, the main goal with breathing is to not just do rectangle breathing and be like, all right, fixed it. Uh, <laughs> there, there's an actual metric uh, by which you want to judge something known as your CO2 tolerance, okay? So back to my rainbow hands over here. I wish like AI was so cool we could have like effects, but we said overbreathing was over here. We trained to underbreathe, so we end up in the middle, okay? So when we underbreathe, What's going to go up in our body? Carbon dioxide is going to go up in our body. Okay. Not to dangerous levels. You're not going to cause global warming internally. You're going to be fine, but it's going to go up, which is a good thing. This is known as CO2 tolerance, building your carbon dioxide tolerance. Okay. If anyone's in the deep sea diving, that's you know what you can think of. So, uh, so you have your carbon dioxide tolerance. You want this to go up. There should be a way to measure this. And there is. Okay, and we're going to do that here. Again, if you're driving, probably don't hold your breath while driving. Uh, <laughs> if you're deep sea diving while listening to this, this would be great to do. So uh, we're going to call, we're going to measure something called a controlled pause. All right. This just means what is the amount of time you cannot breathe in between a normal inhale and a normal exhale, and then do a normal inhale again. Okay. That last part's really important, okay? Do a normal inhale again, because this is not breathe out. Sorry, it's not breathe in, breathe out, and then hold my breath. It's like breathe in, breathe out, pause. And I'll really shorten it up. And then normal inhale again with a normal exhale. Like you, you don't have this catch-up period afterwards, okay? So... The, so that time where you can pause your breathing and be controlled, or you can even think of it like a relaxed pause. Sometimes I'll call it that for people because that, you know, I think people better resonate with the feeling of being relaxed as opposed to, I feel in control of my breathing, like I feel relaxed. <laughs> here. Um, and when you know to inhale again, is it the first sign of air hunger? So we'll go all the way through it again. So normal inhale through your nose, preferably. Normal exhale through your nose and then pause, and then just keep not breathing, don't breathe, and eventually, you will start to feel the first sign of air hunger. And I'll keep talking until I start to feel a sign of air hunger. Okay, I felt that. Inhale normally again, and then that's the relaxed pause there, okay? So, do we want to formally measure yours? Would that be good? <laughs> Let's do it. Mine won't last very long. Okay, it's fine. No, I, haven't, just... I haven't given away what the, the good and bad numbers are yet, so you'll do great. Okay. Uh, all right, so we'll do a normal inhale. We'll, we'll, we'll do, so point up for an inhale. Okay. All right, and then do a normal exhale. And then at the end of your exhale, just like have a flat hand like this, so we know like you're, okay, so 
I'll, I'm going to look at the recording here. So you're going, there's a timer up there. And then at the first sign of air hunger. Okay. So you're at nine seconds. Okay. A little bit better when I first did this. My first was seven seconds. <laughs> okay. I was like, am I dying? Um, and basically one of the first goals we have when we're working with people is 30 to get that to 30. Um, I'll just say below 15 is pretty bad. <laughs> um, and the goal of the breathing exercises, rectangle breathing, and there's other ones is to get that, that number, high, like that's your metric to know how is my CO2 tolerance to know how is my breathing doing there? So uh, over, over like the course of days, cause like if you're, if you're really, uh, well, I want to separate out two factors. So doing the rectangle breathing, that can help a lot by itself. Just like it's it's a switch for people to kind of go over this tipping point. Um, in training your breathing, you can increase that control pause by like two to five seconds per week there. Okay. Um, you know, different people run into obstacles like, you know, this feels tight. Um, people can overdo it and then kind of set themselves back. Um but when you get that number higher and higher, that's a good sign you're resetting your breathing there. So that's kind of the one of the, the main big things. Okay. So that's that 30 seconds sounds like a lot based on. Oh, it's crazy. It's doing, not this right now. <laughs> <laughs> doing the breathing exercises, guys. I'm, I'm gonna, I guess I'm not gonna lie. I was like, wait, you want me to get another 20 some odd seconds? Hmm. Uh, ap after nine seconds, my, body was going breathe breathe damn me breathe uh yeah well it, it's because the reason this is because what i said earlier was that your breathing pattern during the day follows you into the night for the most part okay so sleep apnea falls under the umbrella of disordered breathing yes at night but also during the daytime so that's why like the more you can like, you know, be into this kind of uncomfortable space around like a little bit of air hunger, that will help your breathing sort of overall here. It's really a disordered breathing issue as opposed to just like sort of sleep apnea, if you will. Um, then, yeah, I mean, it really is like, cause like, like the first time I did it, it was like seven. <laughs> I was like, man, I suck. Um, and then, yeah, it takes time. It's not the most comfortable thing. Um, at times you do feel like, why am I doing this? This feels like, so, like, so hard, but honestly, it's pretty easy to integrate. Cause like I said, the best time to do it is like right before you lay to bed. I, I like people to start with that. Cause it's, it's not really extra time, right? It's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I was going to lay here anyway. Okay. Um, but that's how I like people to kind of pattern it or layer it into their life. Like you're washing dishes. Cool. You know, add in like a little bit of that breathing or, uh, while you're checking emails, you don't need to count the whole time, but over time, you kind of get a feeling of being close to that little level of air hunger. And as you breathe around that there, uh, that's what helps improve your CO2 tolerance there. And then you'll have better CO2 tolerance at night. And then here's the cool thing. You'll have less apneas, right? But also because now you're training your, your like, cause when you stop breathing at night, it's the equivalent of like, if you didn't ever do squats before and you're like, yeah, throw 315 on the bar, three plates. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> and that's, that, that's your, that was your first set. Okay. But doing this, like the breathing train during the day, you know, you're, you're getting good reps in, right? Like 185, 225, 200, like you're, you're, you're building your way up. So that at night, when you do sort of snapshot, your body's better, it's more resilient to that big drop in oxygen and everything else there. So it, it helps prevent it and also makes your body more resilient to those insults at night. So it's a nice little tool. <laughs> I like it. I like it, guys. And you can take this and, and apply it today. Okay, he just, he just gave you solid gold that you can literally... If if you identified in that bang session 
as at risk or higher. This is something you can take away and start doing now. And this is the start of Dr. Dylan's protocol for taking care of this naturally. So the good news is you don't necessarily have to have surgery. You don't necessarily have to live on a CPAP for the rest of your life. There are alternatives that you can just get your life back with. Being tired and without oxygen all the time, your brain slows down. Everything gets difficult. Everything is harder when you're tired. Any parent will tell you everything is more difficult when you're tired uh, because a lot of us lose a lot of sleep with our kids over the years. So I'm, I'm sure all the dads out there are feeling this right now. Uh, sleep deprivation will get you. But honestly, most of us have dealt with sleep deprivation, whether it's from work or when we were in school or whatever, something in our lives. Most of us have been there. You know you don't perform as well. You know you don't function as well. Dr. Dylan is sharing a way to start getting your life back without being stuck on a machine or going to more extremes in your life. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely doing like, I'm, I'm taking notes over here. I keep looking down at my keyboard and typing while he's talking because <laughs> I keep taking notes. Uh, yeah. By the time this airs, we'll hope I, I will hopefully be able to tell you guys I have actually like much better uh, resistance to carbon dioxide because I've got a little time before this. So hopefully I, I'll be able to give you some feedback and be like, this changed everything. <laughs> uh, I actually have very little doubt in that. Now, Dr. Dylan, what's next for you, right? You, you said you're starting a kind of an audio show or YouTube show. The, what the, yeah, we had a lot of things going on. Um, so we, I mean, have a book that's, that's there always updating it. Cause I'm a little bit of a, you ever write something and then like a week later, you're like, this should be different. So like, this is why I like books. Cause I can just constantly update it. And, uh, <laughs> people people like like got it like a month ago and they're like this is this is different like it's better yeah um so have that as a as constant work um yeah i got um uh, you know the youtube channel putting videos on that facebook group uh some are uh things on that uh you know that's that's a lot of where, where i'm at uh working with people is the the majority of the of the of the time there uh, you know, just choking people out is, is really for their health as <laughs> no, I'm joking, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's a lot of what we do here. And, uh, yeah, just focusing on that and trying to get the, the word out to people. Cause like, it's, cause like you said, like it's, it's, well, I will use humor to do this. Cause like everybody ideally right now is breathing. Okay mind-blowing concept and like just being able to make those like little changes like yeah maybe a little bit uncomfortable maybe a little bit awkward at first but like just doing that i am really curious by the time that this goes out or even just like um just kind of a timeline actually like so in the first like one to five nights people usually they're like oh this is uh this is not some like weird new age thing i guess i guess breathing is important here <laughs> that's, that's, that's phase one there uh then like the weeks after that as you continue to build up, uh, you can like it. You kind of notice it more on like kind of the hard days, right? Where it's like maybe you woke up early, maybe you didn't sleep well, or like something. Like that, but like you, you feel more resilient there. Um, and then once you're hitting the month mark, uh, it, it does really allow you to have a lot more of that like those moments where you're like I don't really you know, what was the last time I had a really bad night. I don't know, you know, and it, it, it kind of really helps kind of bring you back in, into a lot of a state of ease, just, just from the breath work. Cause like there's, you know, there's the inflammation part as well with, with all of that. Um, but the, the breath work is a, is a really big part that, I mean, anybody can do, anybody can start out with cause it, it does get complicated <laughs> later, but just like any, any sort of workout thing. Right. Cause like there's, you know, if you do body weight squats, cool. Okay, great. Uh, but then if you're doing like a, let's do an overhead snatch script squat. Okay. A little bit different. Um, uh, so similar here, but no, no snatch grips, fortunately. Where's the best place for people to connect with you, doc? Uh, I think the best place, 
ask you, like, this is always the question I'm the least prepared for, even though I do know I get asked this, but like, um, probably the Facebook group, because that's probably where I'm the most active in, um, you know, social media is, is okay, but, um, our Facebook group is the sleep apnea solution. I think just type in sleep apnea solution there. Um, or even just search my name, our website will pop up, which is optimal. And we got, you know, different websites. Um, but I think the, the main one that comes up is optimalcircadianhealth.com. There is pecusmd.com, but, uh, I just have a really bad habit of never picking a website name that people can really write down because pecus, that's a 50, 50 shot. Get that one, right. Uh, optimal circadian health. Most people write in. Yes. Awesome. Most people write curcumin optimal curcumin health and then they're just off getting curcumin supplements instead of coming to our website <laughs> uh, but either of those work videos uh there's some articles there too um uh, it's a good place to to find us you guys of course as always we'll have all of dr dylan's links down in the show notes or the description whatever platform you're on whether you're with us on youtube or are listening on this audio show uh, we will make sure you can find him and follow up on this now, I know you're really concerned about who actually recorded Live and Let Die, the James Bond movie of the same name. And you changed your answer and went with Wings, which is correct. What's even funnier is, right, I looked this up before the show because I, I like to double check when I do these meet, when I do the multiple choice questions. And because I found the question, Wings was not an option. It had some other band I had never heard of in there. And so the right answer wasn't actually on the question that I had. <laughs> so who, was, who, who was the initial band? Or uh, it was like sa sabotage something or some it, it was some band I had never heard of. At least the other three I recognized, but I was like, I don't even know what that is. But yeah, I didn't have the right answer on the question. I, I'm glad I double checked this question. <laughs> I'm glad I got it right. That would have been uh, devastating. That would have been, you know, orange juice pulp level there. <laughs> right, right. You, you have to put a bag over your head and be like, I'm bad. No, yeah. I could never, like, I would have to avoid my dad for a couple of months because he, like, like, his thing is like quiz me on classic rock. And when you did that, I was like, I better get this right. I got to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trained on this one. Fair enough. I, I, yeah, that would be a hard con. I'm sorry. I, blew it. I failed. I, I, I know you really care about this particular show. It's I, 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 I tanked it. I'm so, I'm so embarrassed. Dr. Dylan, you have given us a place to start and a place of hope. Uh, I think this impacts a lot more guys than we like to admit. As men, we tend to be a little slow to admit that we could use some help on some things. If our listeners heard nothing else today, what do you want to leave them with? That that you you because with the breath work, like you, you kind of have the tools you already need to get started and, and start really like making improvements. So um just focus on like carving out that time for yourself, whether it's doing it, um and like like I always tell my patients, like don't get into the 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 whirlwind of like looking for this machine or that surgery or this mouth guard. Like you, you, your body has the capacity to do things right. You just need to give it a little nudge <laughs> and 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 just stick with it, right? And, and then that that allow you to be in a place where whether it's mouth guards. Uh, pap therapy, et cetera. Uh, you don't need to be as reliant on that. And then also on the flip side, you know, having a much more fulfilling, engaging life during the daytime, you know, that's what's possible for you. And you're, you you kind of already have everything you need to do that. You just need to, you know, take a little step with it. And guys, if you find out that the breath work really starts to make a big difference, you can follow up with Dr. Dylan and go into the next stage of this and deal with some of that inflammation and follow up even farther and you may not even need a machine or anything like that. You, you can give yourself back a lot of freedom in your life. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dylan, thanks for hanging out with us today on the show. Thank you for all the information guys, as always be better tomorrow because of what you do today and we'll see you on the next one. This has been the fallible man podcast, your home for everything, man, 
husband, and father. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a show. Head over to www.thefallibleman.com for more content and get your own Fallible Man gear.